Hey everybody, I'm Hunter. I hope you're doing well, and welcome back once again to Culture Coliseum. Today, we're going to be talking about swords. Swords are quite possibly the most famous and widespread form of weapon in all of human history, with every culture and every century having their own takes and styles on how to forge and use these versatile weapons. Despite the fame and awe associated with swords, however, they are far from being the most ideal weapon in most situations, and were never quite as effective or as essential as many modern people would think. The primary reason swords were never as effective as they were exalted is because of armor. It is a lot easier to cut and thrust into meat than it is to do the same to steel. No matter how the design and makeup of blades advanced, armor was not far behind. Despite what many might think, chainmail actually predates full plate armor despite it looking like it would be much harder to make. It had its issues, of course, most notably, most notably the fact that it having to be paired with a thick underlayer to prevent pinching. But when it came to stopping slashing attacks, it was more than up to the task requiring a solid thrust from a narrow point or a heavy, concentrated blow in order to penetrate, meaning swords, as most would think them, would be only as good as a baseball bat against such defenses. Then we have full plate armor, the kind of armor people would think of when they picture a knight of the high middle ages, and in turn a classical sword user. Like with chainmail, it was next to impossible to cut, and piercing it was even more difficult than when it came to puncturing mail. As a bonus, the wide sheets meant plate armor would disperse the impact of blunt trauma, resulting in large bruises instead of broken ribs and ruptured organs. Despite what Game of Thrones might sometimes show, breaking through chain, plate, or both is far from an easy thing. Almost impossible, actually. Of course, just because blunt impacts were mitigated doesn't mean that they weren't still the best way to deal with full plate, leading to the rise of impact weapons that aimed to cause pain or internal damage as opposed to making the victim bleed. It wasn't always effective, but it beats swords by a long shot. So the question is, if swords were so ineffective, then why were so many made, and why were they so popular? The easy answer is that, by and large, people didn't wear armor most days, if they even own any. When traveling, working, or marching, it is much easier to carry a sword at your hip than it is to lug around the ever-useful spear or the heavy war hammer. And like I said, you probably weren't wearing your heat-trapping and stamina-sapping armor. And when there's no metal sheets or rings in the way, there's nothing in the pre-gunpowder world that was more dangerous or as effective as a self-defense tool than a sword. Unlike spears, hammers, or most other weapons, Swords were capable of strong defensive measures as well as offensive ones, allowing for better blocks, parries, and general movement than their counterparts. This is the difference between having a tool that works in every situation and a tool for just this situation. Shining lengths of metal honed to deadly points and edges are much more awe-inspiring than a short knife on the end of a stick or a dull brick on the end of a handle, and were much harder to make as well. As such, swords were kicked to take on a mythical reputation. They lasted longer than a common spear, and had more uses besides. They were the same weight as a warhammer when such weapons came around, but it had a much further reach, and when a trained bladesman used one, it could look like a deadly dance as opposed to the more basic movements associated with pole arms and blunt impact weapons. The result was a classic case of people admiring form over function. There may have been countless better options for weapons to use in war, but none looked better or were as impressive as a sword. There might have been more easily attainable weapons to use to defend yourself, but none were as versatile than a sword when fighting unarmored opponents. Add in some good stories, a couple plays and legends, maybe a religious myth or two, and you cement the idea of the unmatched awesomeness of swords across generations. Once again, I was Hunter. I hope you enjoyed this little insight into swords. This has been Culture Coliseum.